Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to use the rational root theorem when the leading coefficient of our polynomial equation or our polynomial function is something other than 1. So we did a previous video on how to use the rational root theorem when our leading coefficient is 1. I'll put it in the cards right now. I'm going to go ahead and tell you it is a lot easier. Today's video and the example we're going to do today is very lengthy. It's going to take us a little while, so uh, make sure you're ready to go and let's dive right in. So we're just going to start off and here's our problem. It just says find all real zeros of f of x equals 6x to the fourth minus 11x cubed minus 16x squared plus 2x plus 4. So our first step, we're going to start off by just listing all possible rational zeros of f. And this is where our rational root theorem is going to come into play. Remember when we write this, we can say, you know, x is equal to, and we're always going to write positive or negative, and we're going to list these as fractions. So our numerators are going to be factors of our constant term, so numerators. And our denominators are going to be factors of our leading coefficient. So let's just start off and let's think about the factors of 4. We got 1, 2, and 4. And 6, we have 1, 2, 3, and 6. So now we're just going to build some fractions using those numbers. So let's start off. Remember, 1, 2, and 4 are um, the factors of our constant. That's our numerators. So we can say 1 over 1, 1 over 2, positive or negative positive or negative 1 over 3, and then positive or negative 1 over 6. So basically that's us using just the, the factor of 1 from 4 and all four of our factors of 6 for our denominator. So now let's go back to 2. So let's say positive or negative 2 over 1, and then we have positive or negative 2 over 2, positive or negative 2 over 3, positive or negative 2 over 6, and then we can do it lastly with, with 4. So we can say positive or negative 4 over 1, positive or negative 4 over 2, and positive or negative 4 over 3, and then lastly, positive or negative 4 over 6. Now, if you notice, this is a lot of possible rational zeros, right? So if we look at it, there are a couple that are the same, right? So like 1 over 1 is 1, right? Well, 2 over 2 is also 1. So we can forget about that one because it's the same, okay? Now we have one, we have one half, we have one third, we have one sixth. Two over one would be two, right? Same as four over two, so we can exclude that one as well. We have two thirds, we have two sixths. Well, two sixths would be the same as one third, right? So we can exclude that one. Four over one we have to keep in there. Four over three we keep, but four over six would be the same as two thirds. So we can exclude that one, okay? So we were able to get rid of uh, not four, but eight of our possible um, zeros. And so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna now take a look at the graph of this polynomial function and choose some reasonable values based on where our graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so let's look at our possible solutions up here and let's see which ones would be reasonable. So we're starting right here with one and negative one. So here's one and here's negative one. So it doesn't look like our graph crosses at either one of those, so, so we're good there. So let's go back to our purple color. So we can exclude these now. So then we have um, negative one half and positive one half. Well, to me, it looks like both of those could work, right? So let's say x equals um, negative one half, and we'll say, let's maybe write these in order. So x equals positive one half, okay? Now we've got positive one-third and negative one-third. So negative one-third, right, that could be over there. So let's say x equals negative one-third. And let's move that one down just a little bit, okay? Now for positive one-third, that's gonna be somewhere around in there, so I think we're good to exclude positive one-third. Now for one-sixth, so negative one-sixth and positive one-sixth, those are gonna be right in there, so I'm, I think we're good to exclude those. And then we have negative two and positive two, so good to exclude those. So negative two and positive two. And then we have positive and negative two thirds. So negative two thirds could be right in there, so I think we should include that one. So negative two thirds. Uh, but then positive two thirds is gonna be somewhere over here, so I think we're good to exclude positive two thirds. And then we have four and negative four, good to exclude those, and then Four thirds, so one and one third would be about right there, and negative one and one third would be about right there. So we're good to exclude those as well. So what we have done now is we have taken a look at our graph, and we're able to take all of those possible solutions, 
rational zeros of f, and we're able to narrow it down to four possible by looking at the graph, okay? So now what we're gonna do, uh, we have these four possible solutions. They're reasonable based on the graph uh, that we just looked at on the right. So now we're gonna test those values using synthetic division until we find a zero. Okay, so let's start with um, negative one half. So we'll put negative one half right here, negative one half, and we're gonna do our synthetic division from our original polynomial equation. So we have six x to the fourth, negative 11 x cubed. So we have six, we have negative 11, we have negative 16, we have two and we have four, okay? So synthetic division, we're always gonna bring down our six or our first term. So then we're gonna multiply on the diagonals and add on the verticals. So six times negative one half would be negative three. Negative 11 plus negative three would be negative 14. Negative 14 times negative one half would be seven. Negative 16, negative 16 plus seven would be negative nine. Negative nine times negative one half would be, we're just gonna write this as, I guess we could do 4.5. Okay, two plus 4.5 would be 6.5. And then we know 6.5 times negative one half is gonna be a negative, and then half would be 3.25. And once we add here, four plus negative 3.25, that's gonna give us 0 0.75. So did we end up with a zero for our remainder? No, we did not. So what that tells us is negative one half is not one of our solutions. Okay, so let's move on. So we're able to exclude negative one half, right? It does not work. So let's draw a line through it. So now let's try negative two thirds. So we'll go over here, negative two thirds. And we're gonna do our synthetic division once again. So six, negative 11, negative 16, two and four. So I'll bring down our six. So negative two thirds times six would be a negative four. Add those, we get negative 15. And we multiply here, we get 10. Um, and then negative 16 plus 10 would be a negative six. And this is gonna give us a positive four. This would give us a positive six. And this would give us a negative four. Okay, so now look what we have, a zero, right? We got our remainder of a zero. And so now we know that negative two thirds is a solution or is a zero of our function. So now what can we do with that? Well, step four, we can factor out a binomial using the result of our synthetic division. So once again, if we had negative two thirds there on the outside of our synthetic division, think about what the binomial was that we had set to zero, set equal to zero, to give us negative two thirds. Well, that would be x plus two thirds. So now we have x plus two thirds, and now we can use our result here as our other polynomial factor. So remember, this is always our constant, our linear, our quadratic, and this would be our cubic term, cubic, okay? So we have six x cubed minus 15 x squared minus six x plus six. All right, so now I notice that from our four term polynomial here, we could factor out a three to help us a little bit here. So let's factor out a three. And so that's gonna give us two x cubed minus five x squared minus two x plus two. And let's multiply this three with our binomial on the left. So now we have three x plus two times two x cubed minus five x squared minus two x plus two. So now notice down here in step five, we are at this step right here, okay? So now we can repeat the steps above that we've done so far for the polynomial that we have right here, right? Because that's still factorable. We know three X plus two, we've factored that as much as we can. And so let's set two X cubed minus five X squared minus two X plus two equal to G of X. And then once we repeat these steps, any zero of G that we find will also be a zero of F, okay? So let's think about what our possible rational zeros of G would be, okay? So once again, we have G of X is equal to two X cubed, minus five x squared, minus two x plus two. So we're gonna think about our constant term and our leading coefficient. Well, our factors there are just one and two, right? So we could say x is equal to positive or negative one over one, positive or negative one over two, positive or negative two over one, 
and positive or negative two over two. Okay, so once we evaluate these, we have one over one and two over two, so we can exclude that one because that would also be equal to one. And so now we're gonna look at the graph for the g function. So two x cubed minus five x squared um, minus two x plus two. And we're gonna once again look at, okay, these are our three possible, uh, really it's six, right, because plus or minus. Um, zeros of g, and which one of those look reasonable based on the graph? Okay, well here is positive and negative one, and we're not crossing at either one of those, so those are out. And then we have um, negative one half and positive one half. Well, it looks like um, positive one half for sure, and negative one half is a little bit off, right? So just positive one half, and then two is here and negative two is there, so it looks like one half would be our only reasonable solution here. And so now let's check it by doing synthetic division. So let's put our one half right here. We'll change our color back to green. All right, so now synthetic division, we're gonna bring down our two here. Take away this information. Bring down our two. So half of two would be one. Negative five plus one would be negative four. Half of negative four would be negative two. Negative two plus negative two would be negative four. Half of negative four would be negative two and look what we end up with, we end up with a zero. So now, that tells us that we do have a, a zero at one half. So now think, as to write this as a binomial, think about what we had to have set equal to zero to get x equals one half. Well, that would have been x minus one half as our binomial factor, and now we can write what we have as the remaining part of our synthetic division as our trinomial. So remember, this would be constant, linear, and quadratic, so we have 2x squared minus 4x minus four, okay? So now, we're gonna, step six, we're gonna find the remaining zeros of f by solving um, our, our quadratic uh, trinomial that we have. Before we do that though, notice we could factor out this two. So let's say x minus one half, and let's factor out the two, so we get x squared minus two x minus two, and let's multiply once again here. Okay, so we're gonna get two x minus one, and we have times x squared minus two x minus two. So if we think back to our f of x equation, right, our f of x equation way back up here at the top, where were we? Okay, right here. All right, we had our factor of three x plus two, and then we said that we're gonna multiply that by, and we set this equal to g of x, so three x plus two, times the g of x, and that's what we see right here. Well, now, so this is our g of x, so let's fix that here, there we go. Okay, so now we figured out what g of x is. g of x is equal to two x minus one times x squared minus two x minus two. So now we can write this. We can say f of x is equal to three x plus two times two x minus one times x squared minus two x minus two. So we've got three x plus two, it's factored as, mu as much as we can. Two x minus one, it's factored as much as we can. And also if we notice three x plus two, if we were to set that equal to zero, that's gonna give us negative two thirds, which is what we had, remember at the beginning, negative two thirds as one of our zeros. And then if we set two x minus one equal to zero, it's gonna give us one half, one of our other zeros. So now those are our two real zeros that we've got so far, our two rational zeros. And so now we, what we are left with is a non-factorable trinomial. So we're gonna need to use the quadratic formula to help us find our other two zeros. They're still real, but they're not rational zeros, okay? So now let's go down here and let's remember what the quadratic formula is, opposite of b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac, and we're gonna divide all of that by 2a. So a would be one, b would be negative two, and c would be negative two. So we're gonna say x equals opposite of b, so two plus or minus negative two squared minus four times one times negative two, and we're gonna divide that by two times one. So we'll slide this over here. So now we can work left or to the right. Okay, so now we have x is equal to two plus or minus. We can simplify inside of our radical. So negative two squared would be four, um, and then we'd have plus eight, and we're gonna divide that by two. Okay, so now we get x equals two plus or minus the square root of 12 divided by two. 
So now the square root of 12, it has a perfect square factor that we could pull out, four times three, so we can pull out the square root of four. So we have x is equal to two, plus or minus two root three, divided by two. And so now all of these, the two, the divided by two that we have here, right, it's gonna cancel out here, or it's gonna make them become one, right? So we're gonna end up with x is equal to one plus or minus the square root of three, okay? So now we have four zeros here, okay? At the very beginning, the first one we found was negative two thirds. So we're gonna say x is equal to negative two thirds. The second one we found right here was one half. So x is equal to one half. And then we just found two solutions right here. So one plus square root of three and one minus the square root of three. So one plus root three and one minus root three. And those would be our four solutions. And that's how we could use the rational root theorem to find our zeros, our, our real zeros of our function, even if our leading coefficient is something other than one. So now let's type in our calculator one plus the square root of three and then one minus the square root of three. So one plus the square root of three is about 2.73 and 1 minus root 3 is negative 0 0.73. So let's, ke let's keep this in mind. So what I'm going to do is copy this right here. Let's go back and look at our original graph and I'll paste this right here. Okay. So we'll make it to where we can put it up here and see and we'll change our color so that we can see it. Okay. All right. So now we said our four zeros should be negative two thirds. So that could be, and let's see if we can zoom in here. There we go. All right, so negative two thirds, right? That looks like it could be about right there. And then we have negative 0 0.73. Actually, negative 0 0.73 should be about right there. Negative two thirds about right there. Then we have our one half and then 2.73 right there, okay? So that's how we can use the rational root theorem to find zeros of a function, even when the leading coefficient is something other than one.